I got this word a number of years ago, actually 17 years ago. It's the first crafted prophetic word uh, that the Lord and I did together. And basically, um, you know, the normal process for prophecy is you pray, you listen, you think, you write notes down. Then when you got a few pages of notes, you ask, you know, the Holy Spirit helps you to pull it together. Um, but this was different. This was um, none of that. It was just pure. I took dictation for about an hour, hour and a half or something like that. And um, <clears throat> which was just staggering to me, the presence of the Lord and, and the tone of voice that he dictated it to me. He just said, this is how I want you to say it. Because he's very particular. You know, there's, all prophetic words have different voices. They have different tonality. Um, because you're accessing maybe a different part of God's heart. So a number of years ago, the Lord began to just drop one word into my spirit. And every time I woke up in the morning, that word was there every morning. And the word was latitude. And so that was uh, 17 years ago. And um, <clears throat> when, I'd, when I'd written down everything, then I studied it. And, and I'm saying to the Lord, so when do I get to give this word? And he said, not for a couple of years yet, because you and I are going to go through it together. So I did that, you know, for a couple of years, all I did was look at that word and talk to the Lord about what he wanted to do in my heart, what he wanted to do in my life. And I became so super excited. And then over, <clears throat> and in 2005, I gave it for the first time. And I, I trialed it on four continents in about eight or 10 places. And um, I want to tell you that no one followed up on it. <laughs> Nobody. Well, a few friends, there were about 20 or 30 of my friends, and we all followed up on it. But none of the places that I gave it, nobody followed through, nobody followed up. And so I said to the Lord, so what was that about? Was that just for you and I, or what was that about? He said, no, it's, it's a word for the world. It's a word for the prophetic world. Um, he said, but people aren't ready yet. So, um, you know, it's, it's a Graham, it's a sleeper word. That means it's out there in the atmosphere. We're praying about it in heaven. You're praying about it on earth. There will come a time when that word actually will be right in the moment when it's given. And honestly, I think with all that's going on in the world right now, with all that's going on in America right now, um, this word, I feel is right now bang on time. But I've been living in this word for 17 years. So all the things that I've done in brilliant perspectives came out of this word. Brilliant TV came out of this word. The whole thing about the new man, everything that is shaping our ministry over the last decade or so originated in this word. And so... You're going to get a transcript. Please don't take notes. What I want you to do is listen to the voice. Close your eyes. Go and sit yourself inside God's heart and just relax. Just relax. I want to tell you that the word is going to be deliciously overwhelming. <laughs> because you're getting some of the fullness of God's heart right here. So it's really important that you just be still, relax in his presence. You can close your eyes, no need to take notes, and just listen. So the word is about latitude. And latitude, it means the scope to go further than you have ever have before. And each time it came into my heart, there was a permission attached to it. The Father was saying, I give you latitude to explore who I am. To create an opportunity for an upgrade in your ability to go deeper with me. To go further in God than you ever have before. Latitude is the Lord releasing to you and in you, 
a new liberty to explore the extent of a newfound internal freedom to be with the Father. Latitude. The Holy Spirit is going to work with you to develop an ability and an authority that is authentic in your life. For you to come into a whole new place, a whole new dimension of spirituality, and to enable others to press in to that same place. So the Lord says to you, there is a season of favor upon each one of you to go into a deeper place in the Lord, latitude. How many of you have been crying out recently? I just, Lord, I just want to go deeper. I just want to know you more. I know there's more out there. I just want to know how to step into that new place. And that's what this is about. But you know, it's not available to a casual seeker. So the Father says to you that you must step up and conduct yourself like the gold prospectors of old. Be as passionate and excited about the search as you are about discovering something precious. When you study times like the gold rush in America's history, and you listen to the testimony of real prospectors, they said that many people went out there just looking for a new life, hoping to make enough money to start a new life. And most of those people found nothing. And prospectors say that real prospecting is as much about the search as it is about the discovery. Real prophets love process. They know that it's the process we engage with, with God that makes us rich. Not just the discovery at the end. It's the process, the prospecting, that enables us to discover who the Lord really, really is. Space is opening up before you to enter into a new place in Him. And you have to explore this space for yourself, not just for your ministry. The Holy Spirit extends to you an anointing to explore who the Father is specifically for you. Fresh permission has been granted for you to come up into a higher place. Some of you have heard things like this before, but you gave up on the search. Or maybe you looked in the wrong place. You looked for an upgrade in gifting. You searched for a higher place in ministry, a greater profile in the church and the kingdom. <laughs> I know what that's like. You looked in every place but the one that the Father had chosen for you. Had you looked internally at your own life and your own responses, you would have seen the Father waiting there for you. And this is what he would be saying. Behold, I tell you clearly, the upgrade is not about what you do, but it is concerned with who you are becoming in me. <laughs> know that I am a jealous God. Know that I desire you for my own possession, for my own delight. I came looking for you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Why? Because I want you in my heart. I want you in my heart. And I want you to know what that feels like for yourself, but also for me. So come to me. I'm not hiding. Look for me passionately, diligently, and I will make sure that you find me. You have latitude with me. 
<laughs> you have latitude with me, freedom to explore my love and my favor upon you. <clears throat> Make no mistake, beloved, this is highly personal. I am drawing you into an unrestricted place. A place where limitation is frozen, where restraint is held back for your sake. It is a place of indulgence for me, says the Lord. I will indulge myself with you in this place, for I will satisfy my own desire in you. <laughs> I will luxuriate in my fondness and my affection for you. I will revel in my fatherly role in your life. And you, you shall explore the heights and the depths and the length and the breadth of my love and favor for you. Beloved, past promises, freely given and still remembered by me, will come to pass in this next season. And the Father says to you to put ministry firmly in the back of your mind. Do not abandon or forsake it. Just don't make provision for it. I will make provision for it. I bestow upon you a peculiar grace to speak to others out of what you are learning, seeing, and discovering about me. Make time for me, and for me only. This is about me. <laughs> and it's also about you. And when you come to minister to my people, speak freely, honestly, and openly about the journey that you're on and the process you're discovering and the discoveries that are actually coming into your life. And like nuggets of gold, your words will create new wealth, fresh hope, and faith. Healing will flow out of your own freshly healed heart. Water will stand in the footprints of your life. And as you walk through the lives of other people's desperation, they will drink deeply of my truth that lives in your heart. As you grow, in your new place of freedom in my heart for you, an anointing will come in time that will enable you to bring release and freedom to others in a way that you never have done before. It's important that you speak continually for a season, even though there's no impartation to release. My people need to become more desperate in their own search for me. I tell you, America will no longer be the land of the quick fix. But I do tell you also, desperation creates its own momentum. Your story is one of prospecting with passion, of seeking and finding. And the landscape of your life will be filled with signs of my presence. I'm teaching you to look. Enjoy searching for me, as I will enjoy revealing myself to you. In this season of favor, my word is yes. I will say yes to the speed of your movement. I say yes to your searching heart. Will you find me? Yes. Will you be changed? Yes. Will you be filled? Oh, yes. Will passwords come to pass? 
Yes, yes, yes. Will it be everything that you ever dreamt about? Oh yeah, yes, yes. For you and for me. But I have dreams too, says the Lord. I have plans for your welfare, not your calamity. I'm going to give you a future that is excellent and a confidence that is profound. My goal is your total, absolute confidence in my name and my nature. That you would know me by radical experience and that you would be the ambassadors of my heart. I will teach you to minister to me and I will minister to you. And then we will minister both to the body and to the world. And goodness will flow forth from heaven. Favor will overwhelm the earth. And my people will rise strong, passionate, unapologetic. And the battle lines will be drawn between goodness with favor and political religious tolerance. And I will blow through the religious systems of man, opening prison doors and releasing spiritual captives. I will blow through the Western peoples until they rise to meet my Eastern family. And I, the Lord, say, there will be an uprising. There will be an uproar such as has never been seen before. For the latter days of my house will be greater than the former. I will create a new breed of prophetic people who will know how to minister to the Lord and how to live in favor. I will develop pioneers who will explore the territory of deep personal fellowship with their maker and who will guide others to the land of promise. I will create in my body a spiritual catalyst that will change the face of Western Christianity to a more radical pursuit of my heart. <laughs> so I, the Lord, I say to you, rest now. Rest. Soak in this place. Take your ease. Learn the art of soaking and resting to a higher level. And then gather yourself and rise up on the inside and no longer look at the external things, but look to me within. And I, even I will cause you to rise up and prosper and know that nothing shall be impossible to the ones who live from the inside out. Nothing will be impossible, beloved. Nothing will be impossible. But you will do the impossible. You will be strong and you will do exploits. And the fame of it will bring glory to me. As the world sees my bride rising up, so they will be astonished by her beauty. I will be magnified and I will be glorified and I will be extolled. People will exalt in my name because of you and because of all that I become to you. And because of my astonishing grace and your outrageous passion, the world, the world will turn for a season and will come running into the kingdom. <laughs> and the war will truly begin. And I will win. <laughs> I will win. Because I have all power and all authority in heaven and on earth. And I will give it to the bride of my heart, 
to the woman of my choice, I bestow it, and you will revel in it. I give you latitude. A wide open space is before you. A wide open space. You have crossed over the borders of your previous territory. And you are in the land of my promise right now. So now, explore. Explore this place. And know that every place that your foot treads, I have given it to you. Beloved, live before me as a people of promise. Live before me as those who have outrageous blessing upon them. You are my people of promise. And so I say as your father, stop praying like a widow and learn to pray like a bride. Pray like a woman beloved. Come and bask in my favor and ask of me. My heart will say yes to you. Not to the half of my kingdom, but to the whole of it. <laughs> Pray like a bride. Pray like a woman in love. Ask as a woman in love asks of her beloved. I will teach you to pray things that will astonish you. I give you latitude. I give you latitude. I create a space in front of you and I invite you to come and live in my heart. Be a pioneer. Be an explorer. Take new territory. Come on. Cross the border. Cross it. Move out of the place of unbelief into the place of faith. I will come to you. I will confide in you. And you will be the object of my affection, even as I am the object of your worship. <laughs> so, Father, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Holy Spirit, would you put within each one of us the will to explore? Would you take away from each of us anything half-hearted or casual, that we may search out the heart of God as, indiv as individuals and together with others. Search out your heart and explore the boundaries of your favor. Right now, right where we are, we confess we have latitude. We have permission to enter into a new place, a broad and spacious place, bigger than we've known, bigger than we've seen. We're going to feel much like Israel crossing the Jordan, coming out of slavery, crossing the desert, following the cloud, coming into the land of promise, where amazingly we'll live in cities we didn't build. We'll eat from vineyards we didn't plant. We'll drink from wells we didn't even dig. Lord, this is, oh my gosh, this is like winning the lottery to the power of 10. <laughs> Everyone who crossed over into the promised land became wealthy beyond their wildest dreams. They owned property that they didn't pay for. They owned vineyards and wells and land that they didn't need a mortgage for. You created a whole bunch of millionaires when they crossed the Jordan. Amazingly, the Egyptians even paid for them to leave. They were funded, and you took them into the wilderness where there was nothing to spend money on anyway. Breakfast flying in every morning. Oh, my gosh. So they got to eat and save money. How cool is that? They crossed the Jordan wealthy, and then they became really rich. You provided you provided. You provided. How astonished they must have been. How amazed. I wonder how many times, Lord, they pinched themselves. I must be dreaming. I never had this much money in my life. 
Three weeks ago, I was making bricks without straw, straw, and now I'm in a whole new place, going to a whole new dimension. You, Lord, you. We have latitude, scope to explore because of your heart. And that's how we're going to feel. We're going to feel something similar to Israel in these next few years. That sense of delight, that sense of hope expanded, that sense of trust, that sense of all things have become new. All the old has passed away. Any hits you've taken, any punishment you've been given, anything that you've suffered mentally, emotionally, spiritually, any opposition, the things that have been said that have wounded, any wounds you have, they're all going to disappear in this time. They're just going to disappear because something new is going to rise up and we're going to explore newness because God is saying yes to us and we need to say yes right back. We have a feeling that we are coming into a place where the impossible will occur every day. Where every day there'll be new discoveries, amazing things happening. We have to get ready for that in our own heart. We have a sense that we are leaving the land of the mediocre and the mundane. And we're coming into a new place, a whole new territory where our inheritance is right there to walk into. Houses we didn't build. We could walk right in, sit down, turn the TV on. Houses we didn't build. Wells we didn't have to dig. Vineyards. I could go right in and pick the fruit from the tree. How astonishing. This is heaven coming down. This is the glory of God in our midst. This is what the presence of God reveals. This is the substance of God's love for us which is famous in heaven. We believe that we're coming into the land of our astonishment, where we're going to learn to be astonished, to be amazed. We're going to be amazed at you, Lord. We're going to wonder at you. We're going to grasp at the wonder of everything, shaking our head at everything, saying, this is so cool. We're going to have to confess every day that we have latitude with you, Father. I have permission to prospect. And boy, am I going to find gold. So Father, as we sit or lie soaking in your heart, fill our hearts with promise. Fill our hearts with a sense of wonder and awe and astonishment. And our prayer is that we would never, never make any provision for mediocrity or dullness but that we would live our lives astonished. We would be an astonished people, living with a sense of wonder and awe for who you are. So Father, please expand our hearts and our thinking and our faith and our ability to enter into fullness, into fullness, into fullness, that people round and about us, will see the kingdom of heaven coming down into the earth and heaven will open and the Holy Spirit will descend in the form of a dove and the voice of the Lord will be heard thundering, these are my people. This is what it means to belong to the king of heaven. May it be so, Father. May it be so in Jesus' name for his sake, for his glory, because he deserves a people of excellence. He deserves it. He deserves it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. <laughs>